Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today here in uh, Manan. Manan is the planet, and we're dealing with Hula, or Hulu, I, mm, whichever. It's a, uh, it's one of the guys of the guild that's secret and secret and nobody must know. And he's telling us about our next assignments. And uh, last episode he told us about Vorn, who is a bounty hunter who likes... You know, he's sadistic, so they don't like him. Uh, and he's in Tatooine. We need to go to Tatooine. That's fine. What about Rulan? We don't know much about Rulan, except that he's some kind of shapeshifter. We don't even know if it's a natural ability or the result of some powerful alien technology. But we suspect he's b behind several prominent assassinations on the Outer Rim. The Geno Aradhan are worried he might re decide to move his operations closer to the Galactic Core. With his ability to assume virtually any form, he could wreak havoc in the Galactic Senate. We aren't about to let that happen. Sounds good to me. So, uh, how, how, any, uh, any tips? Finding Rulan won't be easy, but we have reports he may be on Kashyyyk. He's probably hoping his skills by hunt, uh, or honing his skills by hunting the dangerous creatures in the Shadowlands. Okay. What about Ithorak? Ithorak isn't violent like Rulan or Vorn, but in many ways he's far more dangerous. He's a con artist and blackmailer, who's taken millions of credits from rich and powerful families. He also deals in secrets and information, and these can be far more deadly than any blaster. But Ithorak is careful. We know he's somewhere here on Manan, but we don't know where. All we know is how to contact him. There's a Twi'lek named Vek at the Manan Soup Track. He can set up a meeting between you and Ithorak. Oh, why would Vex set up a meeting, though? Ithorak poses as a merchant of rare antiquities. It's the perfect cover for his real work. It gives him access to rich and powerful families without drawing suspicion. You'll have to convince Vex that you represent a buyer interested in purchasing some rare, rare artifact. Or, no, rare art from uh, Ithorak. Convince Vex, and he'll set you up. The meeting is your one chance to take Ithorak out, be, but be careful. He'll choose the time and place, and he's not going to leave himself vulnerable. Is there anything else? Just a warning, Marco Jeros. The assignment I have just given you is far more difficult than the simple bounties I gave you as your first test. Complete all three missions, and you will have proven yourself to be truly worthy of joining the Geno Haradan. As before, you will be well rewarded for each successful bounty. You can return to me after each mission to collect your reward. Is there anything else, Marco Jeros? Uh, no, I'll be back later. I will be waiting, waiting here for you, Marco Jeros. The Geno Aradhan are eagle, eager to see the extent of your abilities. And I gained a bunch of money because we solved... Uh, we are looking at received quests, so yeah, we got these. I, uh, so I had solved, solved the... There were, weren't there two? I thought there were two. Or maybe I chose one or something. Hmm. Anyway, mission for the Republic. Let's see, you managed to retrieve the encrypted data module from the Sith base. Now we need to return it to Roland One, so he'll tell you what he may know about a star map on this world. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. Roland One. I think he's actually kind of close. I just uh, brought my volume back up because we were talking to that guy. And, uh... It's a little bit like that. He has a lot of ahs sounds. Uh, so let's bring you girls... And, uh, right there, uh, wait a minute, is that a, do I have them selected? Yes, I do. Um, because we're about to, you know, just g receive rewards, and we must, we must, uh, be, be honorable and just say, Ah, oh, I don't need no money, I have to, I'm a Jedi, I, I smell like roses. And, and they're like, ah, it's true. Very, very good, very good. Uh, anyway, where, Ro where's Roland? Where would Roland be? We have the East Courtyard, Tweet, uh, hmm. oh, Visitor's Hotel. I suppose that that is there. Maybe. Yes. Beep, beep, bop, bop. Wait a minute. I'm going the wrong direction. No, I'm not. It's the right direction. Hello, Mr. Soldier. Greetings, Master Jedi. I, I hope you have you. a pleasant stay here on the Nile. Very pleasant. Very, very pleasant. Or needs, please no, it's the it's all good. Ignis. Actually, that's not that's not who I need to go. Let's see. What I need to look for? Uh, mission for the Republic. Oh, Roland One. He's in the Republic place. Just across the hall. Right? Right. Yeah. Look at me, knowing all the stuff and just being good at generally this game. In general. Generally. Hmm. Maybe. Let's find out if I was right or not. Mr. Roland. Yes. Have Hello. you managed to retrieve the data from our droid in the Sith base? I have indeed. Excellent. It does not appear to have been tampered with. So the Sith did not manage to copy its contents yet. And now for your information. 
We are not supposed to speak of this, but since you are a Jedi and we have exhausted all the other options, I think I can entrust you with this. As you know, the Republic is fighting for its very existence against the evil of the Sith Empire. As you also undoubtedly know, we're doing very poorly. We need much in the way of supplies and material to stem the tide of battle and bring us victory. Manan is the sole source of Kolto, the most powerful medical substance in the galaxy. Frankly, we need as much of it as we can get. Oh, what has the Republic done? The Selkath conservatives, with their neutrality treaties, seek to treat the Sith and the Republic equally. This includes Kolto exports, but a few more far-sighted Selkath See that if the Sith are ever allowed to win, the galaxy will be plunged into darkness, and there would be nothing to stop them from taking Manon anyway. So we made a deal. The Sith really don't like electricity. Uh, this is all the darkness and stuff. Um, you violated the treaty? <laughs> what sort of deal? We recently began construction of a secret underground facility to harvest Kolto directly at its source. We also hope to one day be able to synthesize it effectively. Current techniques are insufficient for the task. So we must mine it for now. The amount we take would hardly be noticed, since most is lost naturally before it reaches the surface anyway. We were nearing completion of the base when the digging teams reported some sort of obstruction. Uh, an ancient building or artifact. Possibly your star map. Transmissions from the base were cut off abruptly after that, and we haven't heard from the station since. I do not like how people say, your star map. It's not mine. I've never seen it before, and it wasn't me who built it. And I really don't like your, your star map. Just... I don't like that. <laughs> pet peeve of mine, I suppose. Not really too much of a pet, really. It's a peeve. Um, so, um, why have you not investigated, though? As you may have noticed, we're hiring a lot of mercenaries around here. Yes. Ostensibly, they're to be shipped off-world to aid in our fight against the Sith. But they're really for another purpose. When we lost contact with the station in the Rackard Rift, we sent our contingent of Republic soldiers down to investigate. None returned. We've tried hiring mercenaries and sending them down as well, but none of those expeditions have returned either. The reason we really sent that droid underwater, and the reason we needed its data back so badly, was to find out what happened to the Rackard Rift Station. But now that we have the data back, our operation is in no danger of exposure to the Sith. And now I must live up to my end of the bargain. Yeah, how will I get down there? I took the liberty of having a submarine prepared for your departure. Merely use this card to get past the door behind our Colto packing room and enter the sub therein. It has been programmed to take you down to the station, and also to take you back up should you need something. I would send soldiers to assist you, but we've lost many of ours, and nearly exhausted the mercenary population of this planet. The soldiers we have are barely enough to keep this base secure. The, the Sith have also noted our interest, and begun to bribe mercenaries away from us. Please, find out what happened to the facility. There may be some survivors left down there. Perhaps even the head scientist, Kono Nolan. Good luck in your efforts. He talked about the mercenaries as if they were a separate race. The mercenary population? You murdered all the people! Or... Yes? How did they die exactly? Anyway, these girls are leveling up a bunch, and that's fantastic. Level 13 now. 13! Let's get that awareness up. Thank you very much. And that powers, let's see, probably that one. Then again, I really want that one. Or I really want that one. Or I really want that one. I want a lot of things. We have Effect Mind. That is only for the main character, isn't it? Yeah, there it is. I chose that because I'm an idiot. Uh, so I'm going to go with the uh, Force Armor. We're going to have Force Armor for days. Should I get the heal? No, we're going to have heal for days. Yeah, much better. Let's go with that. We have Force Armor already. So that's... Yes. Juhani has is, is our Force Armor. Uh, or the one above. Skills, what do you have? The same ones. Nice. Go with them. Feats, what do you have? Ooh. Ooh. Improved conditioning. No. This one might be. Or this one might be. Master Jedi Defense. Oh, yeah. Definitely go for that. Yep. Powers, what do you have? Ooh, you have that already. Okay. Then you could have with stasis or just plague. That sounds like a terrible idea because it's uh, dark side only for suppression. We'll cancel first and second tier force power activated first and second, yep, makes sense. Um, on the target. Now that's something good. That's something really nice. If force points are available, these powers are instantly cancelled, but the target can reactivate them either force points. Or the yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, so we have armor. And having Juhani. Drain life is dark side. Yeah, let's go with this one. Let's go with force cancel thingies, because that sounds like a lovely sure. thing. And uh, we are three Jedis. Three Jedis ready to go in wherever we're going. It's over here, behind their Colto packaging facility. 
It's facilities. There's a lot of facilities in video games. Uh, just the word facility all over. It's not really something that exists or is called in, in real life. Because we all usually make up words for that. Like a warehouse. It's not a storage facility. Well, then again, there are words like that. Oh, that thing looks awesome. That thing looks awesome. I want that. I want a submarine. Like this. Oh, yeah. Look at him. Look at that. I say him. Just so look at it. Let's go. I suppose being a ship would... Um, what do we look at her? This submersible can be used to descend to the deep ocean Rarkert research station. They even gave it a name. Let's go. I'm a jerk. I'm a jerk driver. Scaring off the... I suppose these are, are cousins of the Selkath? Or something? I don't know. That's probably a little bit racist of me to say that. Very uneventful, the journey here. Sure. All fine, all fine. Interestingly enough, the, the graphical quality of the cinematic was sort of about the same graphical quality of, of StarCraft or something like that in the cinematics itself. But that's because I think it uses the, uh, the in-game... Yeah, it uses the in-game engine. That's actually, actually something I never really understood. Because the cinematics use the in-game engine, but, I've, uh, but they're rendered already. They're pre-rendered. And they're re pre-rendered in that weird graphical quality of, of terribleness for Xbox uh, of like just just that that you saw and also in the uh, in the screen size or screen thing yes this what is it this thing this is cinema resolution 21 by 9 I think uh, is something wrong I was remembering Taris I'm sorry Juhani no it's all right I think I'm over the worst of it I apologize again for lashing out at you it was not your fault it was a horrible place to have to live. At least in the lower cities where the non-humans tended to get relegated. Living for years in a place with no sun, living off the trash dropped from the upper levels, and the meager pay doing back-breaking labor. Um... About those raccoons. There was always the danger of raccoons coming up from the sewers. Or more mundane predators living and working in the area. My family and I struggled each and every day to make something of our lives. But we could only go so far. Taxes from the corrupt government. More fees from the gangs controlling the streets. And whatever was left paying for what food and medical supplies we could afford. No one would help you? And of course... There was the constant bigotry and hate from the more affluent and human citizens, lording their wealth over us living below. Every once in a while, a rich human would come down through the lower levels with his droid entourage just to see how the wildlife lived and laughed at the mockeries that were our successes. But I have come to meet many decent humans in my travels since those days. Indeed, some of the greatest people I have ever met are human. Like who? The Jedi who encouraged me to join the Order. The one who was with the group going to fight the Mandalorians. She was human. I am sorry. I am getting away from my point. If there even was one. Sometimes what? I curse the day my parents fled to Taris. But then again, if they had not, I would not be where I am today. They've... your parents? Another story for another time. For now, we must continue our own epic to save the galaxy, <laughs> if we can. Our own epic, indeed, Johanny. Our own epic. Okay. Well, I think I can't talk to her again, but I'm going to try. How may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? Uh, I was wondering if we could talk. What is it you would like to speak to me about? Are you doing all right? I have been doing well, I suppose. As well as I can. But I am more interested in you right now. Do not mistake me. It is just that... Even though we have traveled together for a while, it seems I know next to nothing about you personally. What do you want to know? We have been traveling together since Dantooine, but I know nothing of you before that. Would you... would you humor me and tell me a little bit about yourself? Well... What is that to tell? Your job, your childhood, your life. I am sorry if I am making you uncomfortable. I will fully understand if you choose not to answer. 
Well, the problem is this is an RPG. <laughs> and my character is my creation. So, uh, no, it's all right. I greatly appreciate your taking the time to talk to me. How did you come to be on Dantooine? Besides the obvious, of course. Now, there we go. Proper questions, not, you know, what was the name of your parent? And a pop-up box appears with, where I can type in. Um, so... Uh... I was in the Republic fleet that was destroyed over Terrace. Terrace. It always seems to come back to Terrace for me. I am sorry, I, I, I get distracted. What did you do before ta before that? I was a specialist with the Republic fleet. A life in the army. Not my career of choice, though. We Cathar cannot seem to adjust to regimented organizations like the military. But I have heard that it appeals to males of your species. Fighting? Defending? That is what we as Jedi seem to be called upon to do. Perhaps we are not as unalike as I had previously thought. But again, I seem to be wasting your time with my, my carrying on. I apologize. I wonder if that was a, uh, an actual commentary or... Or... Um, just a coincidence there. Connecting the Jedis with masculinity. Human masculinity, anyway. Uh, let's just How may I be more. of assistance to you, Padma? Uh, can we talk? What is it you would like? Nothing. See you later. Of course. Yes, of course. Bastila! Where's my favorite pug-nosed little girl? That's just so condescending there. She would be so pissed. How can I help? Um, I'd like to talk to you about, uh, what, uh, what you said before about giving in to your emotions. Ooh, that's another thing. Oh, that connects again with the whole masculinity thing in of thingy. So just a man doesn't cry. Man doesn't get angry. Stoicism. There we go. Yes, I did end that quite abruptly, didn't I? Perhaps a master could have addressed my questions with the proper wisdom. But I never should have brought it up here. Not with you. Part of my purpose oh, on me? this mission was to guide you in the way of the light. Oh, that to makes help sense. you avoid the temptations of the dark side. But I fear I've failed in that task. I don't think I'm the proper Jedi to guide you. I am no master. You should have remained with the Council. Oh, come on. We can guide each other. Or sort of. I mean... Wait a minute. She's self-doubting here. Hmm. I disagree. Perhaps you're not being truly objective, then. There's no need to spare my feelings on this point. The fact of the matter is, I have never possessed much skill at controlling myself. With That's the bond the that joins us, it seems I have even less. You have maintained the path of the light side. But it has been in spite of my influence, not because of it. It's increasingly obvious I am unable to guide you properly. Uh... <laughs> that last one. Uh... You're doing your best, I'm sure. That's kind of you to say, but I think the evidence speaks for itself. No, it doesn't. I think I may have made a very big mistake. Aww. I simply hope that you are not the one who pays the price, ultimately, for the fact that I can't help you enough. The point was maybe we could help each other. That's... right? We're both bad ones. She's not... is she? Hmm. That's a kinder response than I deserve. And I can see there is wisdom in your words. You... you continue to be there for me, don't you? Even after I keep pushing you away, you're still around when I need you most. You're and like no man harder. I've known before. And you're nothing like what I expected you to be after... after the Council sent us on this mission together. I will let the face of Marco there just speak for itself. Um, oh, wait a minute. Okay. So this is our decision here. We could, I mean, there's only two options though. That's kind of, we can't push it away this time. Um, I could, I could say this line and not actually, and just mean it in a sort of sarcastic way and see what her response would be. But I don't think the game is trying to push that, uh, to push that line of dialogue there uh, and it's if I do that it's also not I mean I, I don't understand why she's so self doughty right now she, I, I get that she's emotional and that she hasn't been able to control that um, but it's not like I'm any better and she's being like oh you're so much better than I am how could I ever teach you that's not true <laughs> and besides it's not about you can teach by you can be worse than your student and still teach your student a bunch of stuff it's like it's 
especially in stuff like this, because you can serve as an example. Oh, look at me being all, all a bunch of an idiot. And especially in matters of emotions where uh, some people, uh, just when somebody gets really panicky, some people get really just cold, you know, cold-blooded and just do what has to be done, uh, which is, uh, you know, what we kind of want in the light side, I suppose, considering all that I know from this game and the second one. Um, but some people are like that, so maybe if Basila, maybe, yeah, that's that's the thing, maybe if Basila just goes all angry and just gets upset, uh, my character can just sort of offset that and learn by itself, by, by that. So that's what I mean, learn off each other. Um, but yeah, this one is just way too in the nose. That's the problem. That's way too in the nose. Eh. I'm not gonna go with that. I mean, I'm not opposed to having the romance with with Basla. Uh, I mean, I, it's not really a big spoiler to tell you that there's a romance with Basla if you want to. We've seen that already. But uh, I'm not opposed to that. It just. I mean, I'm, I'm also not actively looking for it, because I've seen it already, and any Let's Play that you watch of, of Knights of the Old Republic, and any time you play the Knights of the Old Republic, you're probably going to go with that. Um, but, uh, because it's just an interesting storyline, an interesting test to the writing as well. Um, but I want it to be right. On a sort of, sort of a meta perspective, I want it to be right. And uh, my character knows that Basla has feelings for him. Uh, so... Let's try... Okay, so my character knows that Basila kind of likes him in more than just... Uh, well, that Basila likes him and she doesn't. Because she's, she's very confrontational. And uh, this line over here, she expected she didn't expect me to be like this. This is more sort of proof of that. She's very conflicted about, about Marcus. Uh, for no reason whatsoever. There's just no reason. Why would she fall in love with him? Just... We don't choose who we fall in love with, I guess. Magic! That's that's the best plot device right there. Um, but uh, we know that. I'm going to let her make the choice. Uh, my character is going to let her make the choice if she wants to sort of come out with with her uh, things. Because she didn't yet, so I'm just going to... I'm not going to push. How did you expect me to be? Well, just different, I suppose. Things are not going as I thought they would, I I need time to think about all this. We should continue on with our mission for now. See? Now that could be a good thing. That could be a good segue to what I was saying before. If she came, she comes up and she just says, Hey, so I kind of want to get into your pants. And I'm like, uh, well, that would explain the whole thing about the not being able to lead thing. Uh, well, I'm not trying to make it any... That's not... I'm not trying... Not try. She... she it's fine, she can... Oh, whatever, let's just... How can talk. I help? So, apparently we can't. Then see I you later. See you later. She suggests nothing. Let's see, where are we? So we're in the... This was... I, I thought the Sith base was going to be like the... The the major battle of the... Um, the major battle of the, of the planet, but it's not. And we have a bunch of dead guys over here in a foot locker. Good thing I came over here. Um, so, let's see what we have. A repair kit. Two repair kits. Nice. Because we spent a bunch of them. And we got the submersible over there. Not a submarine. Submersible. Over here we have another food locker with three antidotes. That's always nice. Yeah, I don't know who these guys are. They could be... I mean, they have to be Republic. But for some reason, I... I think they're Sith. And this is Rust? Are you kidding me? Did you make this thing out of iron? You idiots. You, maybe it is, maybe it isn't Rust, maybe it's just a Lycan or things. Uh, and there's a, I was trying to, yeah. I have no idea how that submersible got up there. Maybe it crashed from above. And these, that's why these guys all died. I don't know how the water is not getting in. How? How did you get in? Did they send another submersible? Quick, we have to get out of here, we have to get away! Um... I'm Marco Jeros. Calm yourself down. No! No, we have no time! We have We're to leave now! down? I managed to close the door after they killed everyone else, but I don't know how long it will hold. Uh... What happened here? The cell calf, they went crazy. Oh, boy. They started killing anything that moved. Someone must have triggered the defense systems, too, because all the droids activated as well. I was one of the mercs the Republic sent down here to find out what happened. We came down and secured the first couple of rooms... There were bodies everywhere, and the cell calf came out, screaming and croaking their fishy little war cries. Oh, don't be like that. They're 
I'm sure they're proud of their war cries. What do you mean, the Cellcath, though? They swarmed out and over us. There was no way we could stop them. So we ran. But hardly any of us made it. I locked the door behind us, but... But the others had already left in the submersible. The sharks. The Feroxa out there, and... Worse. I heard an explosion shortly after the submersible left. They didn't make it. Just food for the sharks and the Cellcath. Like us. Um... Uh, um, let's get you back to the surface, I suppose. Back to the surface, yes. No! There's something out there. It got the other submersible already. We can't leave until you do something. Blow up the entire station, maybe. That might distract whatever it is long enough for us to escape to the surface. But all the machinery and stuff is in the southern half, and that, that's been flooded. There might still be environmental suits around, but... but uh, the Selkath might have laid their eggs in them. That's nah, fine. I will squish the eggs. Uh, I I have to get into the station. No, I locked the door so the cell calf won't get in. If you open it, we're all done for. Uh, I have no choice. If you go in there, you're dead. You're all dead. If you want to die, then go. You won't hear me mourning for you. I'll stay here and be, be safe dead. until some sort of real rescue comes. Yeah, I'll be dead if I die. If I die, I definitely won't hear you mourning for me. Uh boy. I don't think anybody hears anybody mourning. No, actually, you know, well, you can always fake your own death. Or not necessarily fake it. It might be just mis misannounced. Now, this person died, and then you come home, and everybody's mourning for you, and you hurt them. You hurt them mourn for you. And goes, no, I'm alive. What happened, you jerk? Did you fake your own death? No, I... What? No, I heard in the news. Oh, the news got it wrong then. Didn't this happen? I think this happened to... Yeah, there's, there's people who have had this happen. Uh, and I'm not just talking about famous people. Because uh, I think, wasn't he Gordon Freedom? Uh, Gordon Free the Freeman? Freeman? Gordon Freeman? Is it? Or is it? Uh, I don't know. I, it's it's one of the Gordons, of the many Gordons in the world that happened to, to ha that this happened to, I think. And then people were calling them and just giving the sympathies. And I'm like, no, I'm alive. The sun doesn't know what they are doing. And that's, that's basically that. But anyway, that's going to be that for this episode. I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching. And I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.